Hello, welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Mrs. Houston, and I usually teach kindergarten at Hancock Elementary in the Hancock Place School District, which is located in South St. Louis County. But today I'm here to teach a second grade social studies lesson for you guys. And you know what? Even if you're not in second grade, I hope you'll stick around and learn with us. We have some pretty exciting things to learn today. Have you ever heard of Native American? Do you know what a Native American is? Well, that's what we're going to learn about today. We're going to take some time to learn about Native Americans, who they were, and we're going to learn a lot about their culture. Last week, we zoomed in on our map and we focused on Missouri and the regions of Missouri because that's where we live in St. Louis, Missouri or around St. Louis, Missouri. This week, we're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to focus more on the whole United States, but we're going to focus on the United States before we all lived here. So a long time ago, before the settlers discovered the United States of America, there were Native Americans that lived here, also known as American Indians or um, also can be known as Indigenous Americans. So maybe you've heard those words. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And what I would like to do is start our lesson with a lot of vocabulary. I have pictures with words and definitions, and I want to talk to you a lot today about vocabulary. Because to understand Native Americans, we need to know a lot about them. And they had a lot of really interesting things that they used in their life. And they used different words than what we use. So we need to know those words and what those things are. We're also going to talk about the regions where the different Native Americans lived if you look at a map of the United States. So we've talked about how there's states, we've talked about geography and how there's different landforms. Well, today we're going to talk about the regions of the United States where the Native Americans lived when they resided here. And we also are going to end our lesson with something very exciting. We are going to learn how they used to write. So they did not write using words like we do now. They wrote using symbols. And so I'm going to introduce you to some Native American symbols and we will end our lesson by writing some interesting sentences using those symbols, okay? So a lot to learn today and I'm really excited to get started. So like I said, we're going to start our lesson with vocabulary words. So here's my stack of words. I have a lot, okay? We're gonna talk about them as I introduce them. So we've talked a lot about culture in past lessons too, right? And guess what? The Native Americans also had their own culture. So culture are the customs and beliefs that shape the way a life for a group of people. And if you look closely at that picture, you can see that um, it gives us an example of something from their culture. They dress using feathers and beads. And this is called um, a headdress. They may have another word for it, but this would be what we would call a headdress. Okay. So culture, the customs and beliefs that shape their life. Okay. The next word that I would like to talk about is tribe. Tribe. So a tribe is a group of people with the same language, customs, and beliefs who lived under one or more leaders called chiefs. Okay, so the Native Americans lived in tribes. And think about how we live now. Okay, we live as a group of people. We speak mostly the same language and have a lot of the same beliefs and customs. Now, some of that's going to differ a little bit, but we call ourselves Americans, right? And the person that is our leader is our president, okay? So Native Americans had tribes. 
they were smaller than if you think of like Americans, that's a very large group of people. So a tribe would be a smaller group of people where they all have similar beliefs, customs, um, and spoke the same language. And their leader was called a chief, okay, so tribe. This next one is a really fun word. And I want you to look closely at this picture. This is called a totem pole, okay? So a totem pole is a pole carved or painted with symbols that represent the history of a family or tribe. So a particular family may have carved out a totem pole to represent things that they've done in their life, or a tribe might have done the same. Okay? They might have made a really large totem pole to express the different things that their tribe has um, accomplished in their life or encountered in their life. This one's fun too, powwow. Hey, you might have even heard that word before. So a powwow is a festival where different tribes gather to sing, dance, and celebrate their heritage. So it's kind of like their version of a party, okay? So think about how um, maybe your birthday, you gather and you celebrate, you sing happy birthday, um, you might have gifts to open. So that's how we might celebrate a birthday. They celebrated by having a powwow, okay? So it was like a festival where they danced and they sang and they celebrated together. The next word is legend, legend. A legend is an old story that has been passed down over many generations. It usually explains something in nature that cannot be proven. So legends are interesting because they're like it says, they're passed down from generation to generation. So usually if you hear a legend, it's a story that's very old. And interesting, I hope you'll come back and join me next week because next week we're going to talk a little bit more um, about legends and maybe even hear a story of a legend from Native Americans. Okay, so legends. Indian drum. So the Indian drum is a sacred object to many Native Americans. It was believed to be the heartbeat of the people. So at those powwows that they had, a lot of times when they were singing and dancing, you would hear the Indian drum play as well. And like it says in this definition, it was very important because they felt it was the heartbeat of their people. So the in Native Americans or Indians really um, loved music and it was a huge part of their culture. Do you remember when we were talking about a tribe and how the tribe is led by a chief? Well, here's a chief, okay? The head or leader of a tribe, he is respected for his wisdom. A tribe might have one or more chiefs. An interesting fact about the chiefs is that they usually wore the most extravagant headdresses. So if you look at his, you can see how large it is and the amount of feathers that he has on there. That's one way that if you were to encounter a tribe, you could recognize the chief. I think that this next word you might have heard before, or maybe you have even played this sport. It's called lacrosse. Lacrosse is a team game in which the ball is thrown, caught, and carried with a long handed, handled stick. So this is a sport that Native Americans tended to play. Teepee. Have you ever seen a teepee before? If you've ever driven down Highway 44 and looked to the right, they have teepees on the side of the highway, which is fun to see. Um, I've also been to a pumpkin patch that had a teepee as a part of their hayride. 
So a teepee is a cone-shaped house made of animal skins over a pole framework. So this is a type of housing that Native Americans used. It could be like their bedroom. Maize, corn, also called maize, was an important crop to the Native Americans. It was one of their main foods and could be easily stored for the winter months. Buckskin, a type of soft leather made from the skin of a deer. Okay, so buckskin, they would use buckskin to make a lot of things. Like the teepee was made out of animal skin. Um, a lot of their clothing was made out of animal skins, their blankets, um, the tops of their drums were also, also made from leather, which is from animal skin or buckskin. Let's see, hopefully I say this right. Uh, with yep, with yep. So it was a, a, a type, typey covered with woven reed mats that is similar to a wingwam. So it looks like another type of housing. I love this. So I don't know if you guys know this about me, but when I was a child, I lived in Texas. I, I lived in Dallas, Texas. And in Dallas, Texas, or in Texas in general, there, were, there was a large population of Native Americans growing up. And um, there was this place called Trader's Village where you could go, and it was like a big outdoor flea market. But anyway, you could go shopping there. And I remember as a child, my mom let me buy a pair of these and they were some of my favorite shoes, moccasins. Have you ever heard of moccasins? Yeah, so they're a type of shoe. Native American shoes made from soft leather that was made from animal skins or hides. And the really cool thing about moccasins is you could buy them pretty uh, simple, like in the picture, or sometimes they had really cool fringe, or really awesome beadwork. So moccasins could be another way that they expressed um, their creativity. Okay. Our next word is uh, wampum. So wampum are small beads made by Native Americans from shell. They were usually strung together and worn as jewelry or a decorative belt. So these would be strung together and used like on their headdresses or their belts, or sometimes they would even decorate their moccasins or their clothing with these really small, pretty beads. Adobe, a kind of clay brick used by some tribes in the Southwest to construct buildings. So adobe. So in the Southwest, some of the Native Americans built their houses out of adobe. Travois, a type of sled used by the Native Americans to carry goods over long distances. It's made of two poles joined together and then dragged by a horse or dog. That's pretty interesting. Chicky. So a chicky is a Somali house built on stilts with a thatch roof and open sides. So this would probably be a house that they would build near water um, since it's on stilts that helps so that the water doesn't get into the house. So chicky. Then there's a long house. The long house is a long rectangular house built on wooden frames. It had large sheets of bark on the outside to make it waterproof and many families lived in the same long house. So this was another structure that they would build for housing um, for shelter. Really cool. 
and they would share this with multiple families. This is a plank house. So a plank house uh, was made from cedar. It had a fireplace in the center and the bark rooftops made the houses waterproof. So this is just another type of house that some Native Americans would build for their shelter. These are interesting. So these are kachinas. Kachinas, um, a spirit from the stories of the Hopi people. Hopi men carved small dolls to represent a kachina spirit. So these are little dolls that they would carve and make to represent spirits. Nukasak, Nukasak. This is a human made stone landmark used for navigation and to mark certain areas or travel routes. So that's interesting. They would use stones to build structures to help them know where they've been, where they've traveled and to help navigate to get back home or to wherever they need to go. So their own little version of landmarks. Um, since they didn't have maps, they used these, they would build these to help them navigate. Um, Cam Unique. Cam Unique. It is a sled that was made for traveling on snow and ice, and it was made from whale bones. So some of the Native Americans lived in regions where it was a lot colder and they had a lot of snow and ice. So this would be something that they would have utilized. The Arctic, which we've talked about the Arctic when we talked about different landforms and regions of the world. So the Arctic is the region around the North Pole with extremely cold, snowy, and windy, windy weather conditions. Igloo. I know you guys have all heard about this, but did you know that um, igloos are actually a type of shelter made from snow and ice blocks that some people lived in? Some people live in igloos. It sounds interesting to live in a house made of snow and ice, but it really does help to keep you protected from the cold winds. Something else that helps you stay warm is a parka. A parka is a windproof jacket with a hood made from animal skin. So a lot of the Native Americans that lived in those really cold regions would need to wear a parka. And our last word that we're going to talk about today is kayak. And I bet that some of you have either seen a kayak or been in a kayak or have at least heard of a kayak. So a kayak, a kayak is a canoe first used by the Inuit tribe. Um, it's made of a frame covered with waterproof skins, except for a small opening in the center, which is where the person would sit. So you heard the word Inuit. Inuit was another native um, group of people or tribe, okay? So now that we've talked a lot about those vocabulary words, we know a lot about Native Americans now. We know that they lived in tribes. We know that they were led by a chief. We learned a lot about the different types of housing and shelter that they had. They used a lot of the resources from the land, like corn was their main food. Um, they used a lot of animal skins for clothing and housing. Um, they loved to sing and dance and have music and played by the drums. And uh, they also really loved to have a lot of detail on their clothing. They had headdresses and moccasins for their shoes, and they made beads out of shells to really decorate their clothing and their headdresses and their moccasins. And they had nice belts. Um, and so one thing that we didn't really talk about is that a lot of the Native Americans to get food, they would hunt. And so they would also make their own tools to help them hunt, like they would make spears with arrowheads um, using really sharp rocks and sticks. So that's just some more fun information about Native Americans. Now, what I would like to do is talk a little bit about the different regions of the United States. 
Okay, so I have a map. And this is just an outline map of the United States. Okay, and we're going to talk about the different regions of the United States. So there were um, five, yep, five different regions. Um, and these are the Native American regions. So we're going to actually color this map and talk a little bit more about those different regions. So let me show you guys the map a little closer. Okay, and so it says color the Plains region yellow. So the Plains region is this center part right here. This is the Plains region. And remember when we were talking about geography in the United States, we said that the plain region is that really flat land. So Missouri would be kind of right here. And so we are a part of the plains region. So we're just gonna color this region yellow really quickly to show that that is the plains region, okay? You can see my yellow crayon broke, so it's tiny, okay? Now, the next region that we will talk about is the Northwestern Coast, okay? So Northwestern Coast region is up here and we are going to color that one blue, okay? So this is kind of a light blue. But this is the Northwestern Coast region. Okay, then we have the southwestern, the southwestern region, which is here, and we're going to color that brown to show that region. Okay, and then the next one says that we need to color the woodland region green. And a little hint for this region is that woodland makes me think of trees and these look like little trees, right? So we're going to color this region green. This is the woodland region. So we will color the woodland region green. And then our last region down at the bottom is the Southeast region. The Southeast region will be colored red. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up this green for Woodland region and grab out my red and we'll color the Southeast region red. So the reason these regions are important is because different tribes lived in different regions, okay? So you might find, um, you might find out that maybe you have um, some Native American descendants, um, or I'm sorry, ancestors, and maybe you could find out which region of the United States they lived in. So this is the Native American regions. We have um, the Northwestern Coast region, the Southwestern region, Plains region, the Woodland region, and the Southeast region. Okay? So just some fun information about the different regions where Native Americans lived. Okay, the last thing that I promised you that we were going to work on today is Native American symbols. So, I found this and it's about the different, or it's different Native American symbols. And I thought it would be fun if we could maybe write a couple of messages using the Native American symbols together. So if you look, you can see this means moon, morning, noon, evening, lightning, rainbow, teepee, blossom, rain, campfire, hunt, happy, spring, fast, deer, bird tracks, man, woman, river, summer, sun, sad, camps, horse tracks, mountain, friendship, good luck, 
good crops war and bear. So I wrote a message and I will show it to you and see if you guys can figure out what my message is. So I just wrote it on this little piece of paper. So I wrote my first one and it says, man, happy sun. So this was me saying the man was happy that it's sunny. Okay. But I wrote another one and let's see if you guys can figure out what this one says using the symbols. So if this is man, we can assume this is woman, right? And the squiggly line means river. What do you think this means? This means morning, good. So this could say the woman went to the river in the morning. So I would like to see if you guys could try to write a message using some of these symbols. So go ahead and see if you can take a couple of minutes to use these symbols to write your own message. Maybe you could say something like, man went hunting for bear. Or you could say, um, friendship is happy. So you can use these symbols to write different messages, which I think is really, really fun. And maybe next week we can spend a little bit more time on that because our time is up for today and that is all I have for you. So I hope you come back and join me next week where we will continue to learn about those Native American people and tribes and we will learn more about their culture and hear some stories about them and I will try to fit in some more time for us to work on their symbols and see if we can write some messages. So that's it for this week. I hope you guys have a super great weekend and I will see you back next Friday. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.